All right, so y'all see the title of this video, guys. I was wrong. So let me go ahead and just jump right into it. No wait, none of that. Now, the M1 Mac Mini, after having it for four months since its first day of release, is absolute fire. But I've been having some issues with it that I really need to tell you guys and just pretty much just get off of my chest. Now, I'm going to keep it all the way 100 in this video. The first thing before we actually get into all of that. Woo! So it's been about two months now since I got the M1 Mac Mini. Wow, low pro fresh in the aisles, 16 to 8 gigabytes. Tell me what's your style. I'm here to tell you if it's good. If it's not, then it's not worthwhile. Let's see, hold up, performance is great. Apple chips stand up right now. Let's go, let's go. No overheating, got grace the jigs up. Best desktop, I own the glow up. Let's get into this video and complete our two month doc order routine checkup. <laughs> I'm back with these bars, shining through the shadows. Hit that like button and subscribe right now while I spit bar lots of stereo. <laughs> What I want you guys to do right now, comment down below the number of likes on this video, literally right now. Like, go down there, right down there, comment down below how many likes is on this video at the time of you guys watching. And keep watching because I got a surprise for you guys towards the end of this video. There's a whole lot of good things when it comes to the M1 Mac Mini. But I want to go ahead and start off talking about some of the issues that I personally face with the M1 Mac Mini. First thing that I have to start off with is for some reason, I don't know why it is, but for some reason, I'm getting these weird error messages when I open up my iMessage app. What's basically happening is every single time that I open it up and I start replying back to a text message or whatever it's throwing up this crazy error message and then it just instantly closes the app so for the first time it did it i went ahead and just restarted the machine and i was like well maybe it's like a glitch but man it kept doing it over and over and over and honestly to the point where i went out on google i started going to forums blogs reddix i mean you name it I went to it to try to figure out a solution and uh, couldn't find one and it kind of got me tight, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I'm laughing right now to kind of hide the pain. <laughs> so there's that issue, right? Then there's the next issue, which is mainly on me. I'm not gonna lie, this is probably not on Apple, but I should have gotten the 16 gigabyte option. But I was being me, I was being cheap C kid and not wanting to max out the RAM. Listen to your boy, save up the extra ducats and upgrade it to the 16 gigabyte RAM option if you guys haven't bought one already instead of the eight gigabyte option. Reason Reason being is that if you do a lot of video editing like myself, a lot of labor intensive stuff, and I always have multiple programs and different things open at one time, especially on two ultra wide displays at that. And when I'm editing things like Final Cut Pro, editing videos for you guys, I noticed that it's not as smooth as it was when I had it on day one when I first bought it. And at first it was cutting through the timeline like butter, but after having it for 120 plus days, it's still good, don't get me wrong, and I'm able to edit from it and different things like that. I don't feel like the same way I did when I got it on day one when it comes to editing videos on the eight gigabyte RAM version. Now, again, I said that that's more of my poor choice decision on my side as well as my frugal mindset. And I learned my lesson from that. Don't get me wrong, I have. That is why the M1 iMac is gonna be here in the studio here pretty soon for me to test out the 16 gigabyte option. Cause yeah, that, yeah, that, y'all know why. <laughs> so recently guys, they had some updates that they've pushed to this machine since my last video that I did. So I went ahead, I took the USB dongle out that I have that connects my MS keys as well as I have the Logitech MS master mouse. And as soon as I did it, I didn't notice any issues with mine at all. I actually edit this entire video you guys are just watching right now. I edit it with Bluetooth only, not using a dongle at all. So it seems to me like this has been something that has been resolved from Apple which I'm actually hyped about. Now, the next thing that I have to talk about with you guys is it's still limited on the number of ports. I, I can't lie to you guys. Now, it does work with my current setup, not gonna lie, but that is because I had to go out and buy something extra, which is the CalDigit USB hub that gives me extra ports that I needed because I have a dual monitor setup as well as monitors with ports on the back that pretty much most people have, which is either a display port or an HDMI port. Most people out there don't really have monitors with Thunderbolt ports on the back of them of their existing monitor unless you want to go out there and spend the bag bag because those monitors cost a bag bag. So on the back, you only get two Thunderbolt ports on the Mac Mini instead of the four, which I felt would have been much better and more useful to users like myself. Because let's say you want to do dual monitor setup, right? Just like the one that I just talked about. Now using the Thunderbolt ports, then just like that, you guys are already out of USB-C ports to leverage on your machine. Now, on my current setup that I have right now, I use one display port and then I also use one HDMI port to be able to connect it up to the Mac Mini. But if they just had two HDMI ports, then I could have just used that 
instead of having to use an external system to have a display port go out because again i don't have a monitor with a thunderbolt port and then the back of the mac mini doesn't have another hdmi port or a display port so i'm forced to go buy something else in order to get my dual setup with my m1 mac mini so i just feel like the management of ports to me was just not the best decision from apple on this machine that could have been because of the limitation of the m1 chip on the inside and if so then okay i get it the ideal situation for me would have been four thunderbolt usb-c ports and two hdmi ports now maybe this is something we can get in the future because i'm not gonna lie i got my eye on that m2 as well as the m1x mac mini pro that i've been hearing about here in these tech streets so now that we got pretty much all of the cons about this machine out of the way let's go ahead and get into some of the pros because although there were some of the things that I would have liked to see that I would like to see Apple improve on with the next version the next generation there's still a lot of good things that I have to say about this machine that still makes this machine worth you guys spending your money on it the first thing that I have to talk about is the size of how freaking much this is important let me tell you guys why all right, so y'all see this desk that's behind me, right? So when I first got this desk and I had everything set up here, still had dual displays, but instead I had a MacBook Pro and I had a bunch of other cables and everything that was running with it. Ever since I got the M1 Mac Mini right here, guys, it has saved me so much space on this desk. Like literally, I hardly have nothing on this desk anymore. Still got my Cal Digit because I just talked about that in this video, but overall, guys, the Mac Mini in size space is a huge, huge space saver. Highly recommended for sure. Now, the next thing I've been testing out, guys, is performance from a long-term perspective. Now, I kind of touched on this already a little bit early in this video. So the one that I have here, like I mentioned to you guys, is the eight gigabyte RAM version. Now, I know what you guys are about to say from my last M1 video. Well, see, kid, didn't you say get the 16 gigabyte? Yes, I did. And I still believe that you guys should do that as I expressed early in this video, as well as that one. But based on my cheap frugal self and my budget, I didn't want to actually spend the bag, but I bought the eight gigabyte RAM version because I wanted to see how good the M1 one chip is and i'm gonna be honest with you guys the m1 chip is still a beast even with the eight gigabyte ram option so much that literally guys when i'm able to actually do it all of my computers will be on apple's new m1 or m2 or m1x whatever they call it because it is fast it's good and it's efficient with handling pretty much everything you know to a certain extent now let me show you what i was actually dealing with before the m1 mac mini got in the house real quick let me let me show you this real quick so y'all see i don't even use it i got it in the bottom of this little storage drawer right here this is the 2018 macbook pro i haven't been using this look at that it ain't got no juice but anyway this bad boy here sounds like a spaceship i require apple because as a content creator i need something that is powerful as well as it integrates well within the ecosystem and to be able to for me to be able to transfer files and different things like that let me give you guys perspective real quick all of my videos from end of last year to right now that you guys been seeing here on the channel are all shot in either 1080p or 4k as well as edited all on the M1 Mac Mini that I got over there. And if you guys don't know, 4K video files, guys, are extremely large files and they take up a lot of processing computer power to be able to handle it all. Now, I'm not gonna get all like super techy and all of that, whatever, but you guys get my point. It requires a whole lot of power for a machine to be able to handle that. Now, although I do notice sometimes now after having it for four months or so, that the editing is not as fast as it was when I got it on day one. Now it could be because I've added a lot of text as well as effects and different things like that to edit in my projects, but guys, I'm still able to complete projects regardless and get them out for you guys to be able to see. So far, it's been able to handle anything that I've been able to throw at it. And trust me guys, I throw every freaking thing at that machine and at the end of the day, I'm still able to finish what I started and I set out to do. I'm talking about connecting multiple ultra wide monitors, having many tabs open, uh, video editing, photo editing, music production, like the rap you guys heard at the intro of this video, gaming and even like live streaming at the same time. As long as you guys not out there trying to stream in 4K or anything like that, then I think you'll be fine. Now, it's not perfect because of the issues that I spoke about earlier in this video, but I have to talk about applications operating on Apple's Big Sur and being Apple Silicon compatible. I will say, when I actually did my research on this, on my two month update video, there was still some applications and plugins that I used that didn't necessarily work at that time. But one thing I'm noticing, companies are still out here still working and getting everything up to speed because now every effect that I personally use within Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere, I use for my personal needs, work on silicone as well as Big Sur. And I don't need to really use like back doors of like going here on my older machine here in order to finish what I need to. Because for the longest, 
I would use this and I wouldn't update this machine because some of the things that I needed, I needed an older version of Intel version to be able to handle and do what I actually needed to get done for my videos. Now, when it comes to storage and how well that has gone for me, now I told you guys all in my previous videos that I'll have for you guys down in the description section below that you guys should not buy the spec out storage option because it is way too freaking expensive and you guys can get external storage for way cheaper on Amazon. This still stands today. So I ended up buying this external USB dock that has a hidden SSD slot on the inside. So if you guys purchase your own SSD to expand your storage, guys, it works perfectly. And I'll go ahead and link that down in the description section below as well. So here's what I did, right? I bought the 512 gigabyte base version of the storage option, save myself some bread because I never save anything to my external storage on my machines. Reasons being is because like it literally will clog up your internal storage with just junk files and video files and that can extremely impact the speed performance of your machine. Let me say this again guys, get external drives because saving stuff to your internal storage can literally impact the speed performance of of your machine in the long run if you guys do not manage it properly. And most people out there, y'all ain't managing y'all stuff and y'all know it, which is why Apple went ahead and created stacks to group files as well as your photos that people tend to save on their desktop. So I also bought an external drive for me to be able to save things to and work from. Now I'll go ahead and include some that I personally recommend down in the description section below if you guys wanna check that out. But trust me guys, buy the cheapest storage option that Apple offers and save yourself some money on the machines and buy some external drives and that way you guys will still come out on top in the savings department. But even with the pros and cons guys that I've shared it for you guys in this video, do I think the M1 Mac mini is still worth you guys' money at this time? I'll be honest, if you guys were looking to buy a computer, I would say yes, go ahead and give the M1 Mac mini a huge consideration if you guys are wanting a desktop-like experience into the Apple operating system and you don't wanna really shell out a whole lot of money but you still want that same high-powered fluent and experience. I am hearing rumors and I, I got to throw this in there. I am hearing rumors that a new M2 or M1X Mac mini might be just right around the corner. So it might be best for you guys to kind of hold off for right now. If you guys feel like you want or you need more power, I have to admit this machine here is an absolute beast guys. When it comes to handling all the things that I use a computer for literally watching content, normal web browsing, like on being on YouTube or whatever, video editing, photo editing, music production, it can handle literally everything that I I've been able to throw at it and I'm still able to get my task complete. So after four months or 120 days, am I happy that I picked this up? Yes, I'm happy that I picked it up and I think you guys will be happy with it too and you won't have any type of buyer's remorse at all. Well guys, that pretty much wraps up this video. If you guys found it helpful, go ahead and comment down below and let your boy know. And don't forget to make sure to tell me how many likes is on this video at the time that you guys are watching it. Thanks again for watching and uh, yeah. I'll see y'all in the next one. Squad! <laughs>